how does that affect organizations? Yeah. How, how is that good for leaders to be aware of or Absolutely. individual workers? Absolutely. Again, Max Bazerman, Mazreen Banaji, and I, uh, we thought hard about that. And we put together a Harvard Business Review article called How Unethical Are You? Where we actually, <laughs> I, I know, because it just sort of captures <laughs> it. it. We came up with actually four really central issues that organizations face. Um, one of them was conflicts of interest, that we, we tend to believe that our professionalism will protect us from being biased. So uh, if I'm a senior leader trying to decide who to put into a fast track program, and I came out of marketing, and I'm considering candidates from marketing, finance, accounting, manufacturing, I want to believe that it doesn't matter where I came from, that I can be impartial. But all the evidence suggests we are influenced by our conflicts of interest. Mm. Supreme Court justices, doctors, all of us, we claim professionalism, but the truth is we're human and our bounded ethicality means conflicts of interest are real. That's one example. Mm. Another might be, um, this is one of my favorites, overclaiming credit. That um, there's some great study, one of my favorites by Nick Epley, Eugene Caruso, and Max Bazerman. And what they did was they went to academics who co author articles together. So when we publish in journals, there's often two or three or four of us. And they did a survey asking these teams, how much did you contribute to this project, this paper that was published? And they asked each person individually, and then they added up those percents for each team. <laughs> the average sum was 139%. <laughs> Surprised it was only that far. Only over. that much, right? <laughs> and there's been similar studies. There was actually a classic study that asked husband and wives to do a similar thing. And oh, again, we yeah. see a number well over 100%. <laughs> and so what's so interesting is for each person, they actually are speaking from a place that feels like truth to them. So perhaps uh, the, the person who put a lot of the writing into a project is valuing the writing as mm. the most significant part. So that's why I contributed 75%. Yeah. But perhaps the person who did the analysis views the data as the central piece of this project. And so for them, they contributed 75%. <laughs> and we can see how our mind brings us to the mm. conclusion that favors our own interests. That's overclaiming bias. And then the piece that my work tends to um, focus most on is unconscious bias. Unconscious bias is again something that it's not specific to certain individuals. We all carry unconscious biases. These are associations we have between uh, concepts that we're not even aware we have. It happens like lightning fast, mm -hmm. millisecond fast. We literally measure it in milliseconds. If we were to think slowly, I probably wouldn't make any association between uh, white people, black people, and more intelligent or less intelligent. But on a lightning fast test, that it's called the implicit association test, that Tony Greenwald, Brian Nosek, and Mazreen Banaji have made widespread and rigorous in psychology. On this test, we see time and time again that 75% of people in a split second environment are more likely to associate positive things with white people and negative things with black people. Mm. That's called an implicit bias or an unconscious bias. On a conscious level, a system two level, that's not what people report. Hmm. This is an unconscious automatic bias. Is it socialization? Is it a cultural? Thing? Yes. And in fact, we see, because the IAT has been administered in a lot of different countries and different cultures, where, you know, in this country, race is the charged issue. In other countries, it might be religion, it mm -hmm. might be skin color, skin tone. Mm -hmm. um, and so the IATs are different in each country to reflect oh, what's wow. the cultural issue there. Mm -hmm. And I like to think of it as fog or rain. It's when you're in rain and fog, you don't even realize how it's permeating all of you. Mm -hmm. The culture we're raised in from infancy on is that rain and fog. We're forming associations all the time as to mm. what's good and what's bad, just from what's being fed to us in the environment around us. Let's stick with the white, black, the race IAT example. It isn't just whites who show that implicit bias favoring whites. We see approximately half of blacks mm. showing that association as well. Mm. So the rain and fog surrounds all of us. Right. Being a member of a group doesn't necessarily protect us from it. Mm. Women yeah. show an implicit bias associating men with math. Right. 
versus associating women with math, mm -hmm. despite on a conscious level not necessarily believing that to be true. Mm. So this rain and fog is just so permeating and so powerful despite our conscious system two intentions.